So for some strange reason, I thought that everything could fit into this video. Unfortunately, there's still some issues with this case. I was able to get majority of the work done, but I figured by the time we get final results, it would be better to assemble a second part to this video. So guys, uh, second part will probably launch next week. When it does, I'll definitely link it in the description box of this video. So if you're watching it, like let's say not on the release date, but a week from that, uh, make sure you're gonna click on the link in the description box to watch part two. That's where the results are gonna be revealed. And uh, I'm hoping that they're gonna be uh, worth the wait. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. This is pretty much the wiring and establishing communication with the chip, making sure the ID comes up correctly and prepping everything to get the physical extraction done directly out of the NAND protocol. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, guys. Uh, thumbs up and comment for the algorithm. I really appreciate it. Uh, this card, it's spent uh, quite a bit of time at the shop, and I'll explain why. Not every case takes a long time to develop, but due to certain, certain factors, we have no other choice but to uh, uh, wait until a better opportunity comes around. So uh, this client reached out at the time. Um, content on this card it's been formatted with the Sony camera and uh, as you may know Sony will uh, wipe out the translator and the translator that is zeroed out will display no data no data recovery software that you can plug this card into will display that there's anything on there uh, that could be captured so I got uh, deep spar USB stabilizer hooked up I'm gonna plug this card in right now it's uh, not powered on yet but it's a fully functional card. There's no repair work or any work that uh, needs to be done to bring this device back to life. I have my control panel up here. I'd also like to start our studio app uh, on another half. So if we go into the log and uh, we see mm, source not assigned, that means is that our device is not powered on yet, but if we power it on, we get this SD Transcend uh, product come up. The reason why it says Transcend and not Lexar is that uh, the brand of the uh, card reader is Transcend, as you can see. Over here on this side, uh, you see Transcend um, product mounted. Okay, I'm gonna select scan this. Let's delete the ranges from zero. Okay, from zero to the end. And we hit scan. Um, that's what it's locating. And if we pull up our map, we see that with a speed of 37, 38 megabytes per second, it's going through the card and checking out what's in it. All right, so we don't need to do all that because uh, as I mentioned, this card has been formatted by Sony. If this card was formatted on a uh, Nikon or Canon camera, this would not happen. Uh, Canon and Nikon do not delete anything from the translator. They just perform what known is a quick format and that wipes out the beginning of the uh, volume, puts its new fresh empty looking like um, volume and then everything that's following it presents itself as unused space so you're free to override it but it still is physically and logically present on the device so you would be able to run data recovery software such as this RStudio for example and locate uh, files that uh, would not normally show up if you just plug them in to the Explorer and go through my computer try to access right but not with Sony with Sony if you go into this section this shows hex content of the card you see that it's fully fully filled with zeros and that's what the data recovery software is going to encounter obviously from zeros you cannot produce your data more and more cards today uh, come in with a error correction algorithm known as a LDPC LDPC cards are not recoverable as of yet and we're in uh, end of August 2023 there are no tools that support this and there are no promises of any developers that the tools that will support it will exist in the nearest future so for now LDPC cards are a non-recoverable device if you format your Sony card if you format your card in the Sony camera actually 
uh, and it turns out to be LDPC, your data is not going to be recoverable this way. So we get f flooded with requests for Sony post format cards uh, for brands like SanDisk, which is a super popular brand left on the market when Lex are left. Um, a lot of cards that are SanDisk, uh, even by looking at the label, you can right away tell that they will be LDPC. I personally think that all 170 megabyte cards are LDPC. Uh, sorry, 170 megabyte per second cards. That's the speed rating on them. Uh, I also have uh, seen a lot of 135, 140, 150 uh, ranged cards, 200, 300. Uh, megabytes per second LDPC so pretty much everything that's over 100 megabytes it will most likely be based on LDPC we'll begin by taking off power from the device the card can now be removed we have nothing going into it and uh, carefully splitting up the case I use a blade for that and uh, this fine blade here will do a great job separating the case so uh, back to the story, this was sent in uh, by a client from Netherlands and I received this card um, several months ago. I can't recall exactly when uh, this one sent in, but it's been sitting for a while. So uh, the reason why it's been sitting for a while is that uh, this card at the time when it came in and up until now, it remains a card that is not uh, listed on any of the databases for technological pinouts uh, for NAND protocol access uh, by any of the vendors. So there are two vendors that list pinouts uh, if you own their tools and if you subscribe to their uh, tech support uh, and that's PC3000, Ace Lab and uh, Rusolute VNR. So uh, this card, as you can see here, has a a certain design um, in it and that design currently guys is not listed on uh, these vendor sites that's what the area up I use this fiberglass scratch pen I mention it almost in every single video so over here you may see uh, a series of these dots here that's all we're gonna need to connect so I'm not gonna bother scraping up the top section we just need to expose this section right here uh, we grab the adapter we grab the piece of glue that we're gonna heat up momentarily I'm gonna turn this thing on Now this is a thing of a preference, you know, different places may work differently with them. Sometimes I see um, like no flux residue on cards. My cards are swimming in flux by the time I'm done wiring with them. I've been working with this one for years. It's not a specific brand. A lot of people ask me what brand of a wire that is. I don't know if there is a specific brand name to it. Um, I just know that I bought the roll of this thing like way way back and it's been um, with me for a long long time I think this tip is gonna need to be changed soon so what we're doing right now is just like tinning up these um, contacts here in case if they need to be wired up that will make the bonding later on easier with the wire
yeah sometimes uh you know you if you don't solder for like several days straight you do lose that touchy feeling with with the iron you know so takes a little bit of getting used to all right so uh what signals do we have on this side cle and we I think we're done with this side for the for the ground I'm not gonna be uh, using this ground pad we'll use just this one with the 30 gauge wire to the interface up here we're gonna start wiring up our bus from here one here is one. Oh, sorry two Okay, that's set. And this is um, ALE uh, address latch enabled. Just need a couple more wires, guys, and it's done. Alright, so that's what we end up with. It doesn't look like the priest thing in the world, but uh, it should be should be good. The red wire goes onto the ground to make sure we have connection with the adapter. Everything that's connected that's not in short should be uh, producing a one single short beep. And for the ground to make sure it's connected, it will produce a continuous beep. Uh, so you can see, we pull up, we get 
two banks recognized as EC1C983F, uh, 